Welcome back. It is InfoWars Nightly News, the second half of this November 2nd, 2011 transmission. And we've had a lot of listeners contact us and say, hey, you interviewed Kevin Annette three, four years ago in 2007. Have him back on. There's been even bigger developments since then. And we can put on screen a Globe and Mail article. It was also in the Ottawa Citizen and other papers admitting that half of the children taken from natives um, in the different orphanages in Canada died, at least half. And they say tuberculosis, other things. Well, Kevin Annette uh, is a uh, former minister of the United Church of Canada. He is the author of um, Love and Death, the Valley and Hidden from History, the Canadian Holocaust. Again, he authored two books about Canadian Aboriginals, Love and Death in the Valley and Hidden from History, the Canadian Holocaust. And uh, he joins us to give us an update because a lot has happened since then. And a few months ago, he tried to fly into England, which Canada is a commonwealth of, supposedly has that right, and was barred from flying in um, because he was going to speak at a child abuse rally. So again, uh, he's digging into this, literally digging into it. Uh, and I've seen a lot of demonization campaigns and things going, but we do know that in these particular orphanages, according to the Globe and Mail and other reputable newspapers, half the kids died. Now, wow, I mean, if there's orphanages and half the kids are dying, and we're talking about the 60s and 70s, something is going on here. And of course, before that, and now they've gotten permission from some tribal councils to dig in in the last few weeks uh, into reported graves. Uh, so this is starting to really come to a head. And we saw Michael Savage, love him or hate him, banned from flying into England ever because he criticized Muslims. I mean, where is free speech going in the Western world? Why can't Kevin Annette, who works and lives uh, with the uh, natives, the Aborigines, uh, what people would call, I guess, Westerners, Indians, uh, I, I mean, why can't he go to England? Uh, and so he joins us uh, now uh, to kind of boil down what's happened in the past and what's happening in the present and where he sees this investigation going in the future. Kevin, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Alex. Break it down. Uh, where did this saga start for you and how deep does the rabbit hole go? It goes pretty deep and it's not uh, over yet. The, the story for me started in 1992 as a United Church minister on the west coast of Canada. Very first native home I visited as a clergyman, they told me about a murder in the United Church Residential School. In the years since then, I've begun to uncover this wider story to the point that now, not only has the Canadian government since our last interview been forced to issue a formal apology, but party leaders in Parliament actually stood up and referred to mass graves of children and half the children never coming back. So this has been officially acknowledged, but at the same time, the Canadian government and the churches have done their best to conceal the whole thing through a very controlled uh, so-called Truth and Reconciliation Commission where people are not allowed to name names or talk about wrongdoing, and the churches have actually been legally absolved from any of the wrongdoing. So that's why we've continued our, our own investigation uh, with the Mohawk people around Brantford, Ontario. We're now conducting surveys and actual archaeological digs on the site of the oldest residential school in Canada. And we're convinced that this is going to show the final evidence, the forensic proof of uh, how and why so many children died. And I, I've seen reports in the news that the government's tried to get tribes to block you, but, but the tribes have now given you uh, access. I mean, the fact that they're trying to block you uh, really, really does add a lot of credence to what you're saying. But you were talking about this first, you know, as you said, 15, 16, 17, 18 years ago. In the last four years, they've now admitted half the kids dying. How, what's the time frame here and how many orphanages? What's the setup? How did you discover this? Well, the, the schools, like in America, the schools, uh, and I don't want to call them schools, they were really internment camps. Uh, there was very little education offered to the children. Uh, they were camps where native kid, children under law since 1920 uh, were forced into these schools. Over 100,000 or close to 200,000 children went through. So we're talking 50 to 100,000 children never came back. One of the reasons that they, so many died is because of a practice of deliberately housing 
children sick with tuberculosis with the healthy and then never treating them. So they were using germ warfare to kill off large areas of, of the country of their native populations. And again, this was a phenomena in America as well. We're already beginning to make links with groups in America that are finding the same crimes, the same kinds of mass graves. And uh, this is something that the, the culture can't deny. They can simply evade it by pretending that they've somehow addressed the issue when in fact they haven't. I've also seen reports, uh, confirmed reports, about in the 70s, a program where close to half the natives were sterilized uh, here in the United States, native women. Well, we know about eugenics programs, not just against n Native Americans, but others uh, for making lower than a B-plus on their, on their grade cards. You know, we've uh, uh, covered that in my seminal film, Endgame, Blueprint for Global Enslavement. But I also have seen reports here where they demonize you in Wikipedia and other places for daring to protest. They use uh, terms how horrible it was and that you were harassing practitioners. You know, how <laughs> dare you go with some natives uh, to a church uh, where uh, you guys believe there are people involved that have been involved in the cover-up and how dare you speak up. I mean, again, they're just really trying to demonize you. Very much. I mean, to give you an example, last Sunday we went down to a, the, the Holy Rosary Catholic Cathedral in Vancouver. We were simply trying to enforce a banishment order. The local Squamish hereditary chief said to the Catholic, Anglican and United Churches in Vancouver, it's time for you to get off our land. You never legally came here. You stole this land and you've murdered our children and you won't even return their bodies. And so we were simply peacefully, nonviolently enforcing an eviction order. We were met on the front steps by the Knights of Columbus who brutalized people there, pushed them down the steps while the Vancouver police looked on and did nothing. So, you know, who's the per perpetrator of violence in this situation? We're simply saying it's wrong to have committed mass murder against children and then never returned their bodies, never admitted any of this, and gotten off the hook legally, which is what's happened in Canada. Like many other countries, like Ireland and America, the same kind of indemnification of the churches has gone on. And so, you know, we have to say, look, the, the issue here is mass murder and genocide and ongoing crimes against humanity. It's not, you know, the way that they're trying to make it look like it's an issue of one crazy white guy. That's hardly the case. We have continued people coming forward, eyewitnesses. If you go to our website, hiddenfromhistory.org, there's an interview with Irene Fable, who's an eyewitness to seeing a little baby thrown live into a furnace by a Catholic priest in a Saskatchewan residential school in 1944. She witnessed it. Now, in any other country, there'd be a mass uh, investigation. There's nothing happening in Canada about this, and we're trying to get this uh, changed by bringing in international attention. We want to get this in international human rights courts and have Canada and its churches charged with genocide. Well, uh, Kevin, you know, again, all I know is your parliament has admitted some of this has gone on and been confirmed. They admit half these kids are dying. I mean, that's an incredible number. Uh, so this stonewalling um, isn't going to work at the end of the day. And, and I think back to even New York Daily News uh, a few years ago admitted that they take foster children and test pesticide drugs on them till they die. Uh, they radiated 4,000 plus U.S. children in secret radiation studies. And then you learn all over the world native groups are used in these experiments. And it's like there's some type of global psychopathic uh, guild uh, that is just getting off on all of this. Uh, so, I mean, uh, it's crazy to not investigate it. I don't know all the little specifics of, you know, the cases that you're looking into. You know, I mean, all the little details. Uh, but, but, but why would they ban you from flying into England? Because from what I've read, you're a Canadian citizen. You've got a right uh, to, uh, to travel in the Commonwealth, just like I have a right to travel in the 50 states. Right. Well, the short answer, Alex, is that the Crown of England and the Vatican are the two main perpetrators of this crime against humanity. And we have an eye had an eyewitness. He died suddenly in hospital. His name was William Coombs. And he's a native man who, as a child, claimed to have witnessed the Queen of England, uh, Elizabeth Windsor, and Prince Philip come to the Kamloops Residential School in October 1964 and leave there taking 10 children with them, none of whom were ever seen again alive, seven boys and three girls. We wrote to Buckingham Palace, asked the Elizabeth Windsor whether she had any information on those disappearances, never received a word back. William was to come and testify in London about that incident. He died very quickly in the hospital. Uh, basically, they, they induced a coma in him and then pulled him off life support after less than 48 hours. I talked about that on the air. I was about to come to England and discuss it, and I was simply not allowed into the country. No reason given at all by the UK border agency, simply banned without cause. Were, was the royal family in Canada at that time? 
Yes, they were. According to the uh, records, which were on the Internet, you can look it up. The royal visits in uh, the 10 days in October 1964, the Queen and Prince Philip were visiting eastern Canada. But, uh, you know, there was a period of time when they could easily have flown out to British Columbia. Well, well, come on. I mean, they are Transylvanian royalty. I'm sure none of this is true. Uh, uh, wow. Uh, just, you know, truth is so much stranger than fiction. All I know is I got the Globe and Mail. I've got the Toronto Star. I've got the Ottawa Citizen saying that at these facilities, half the kids were dying. And like you said, this wasn't some place where they had tuberculosis. This is where they were taking kids with it. It's like the old British manuals uh, from 250 years ago. Uh, right before this country got founded, French and Indian War, saying, yep. take the blankets from your troops that have it, lance their boils, make sure it has fresh pox on it, give it to the natives. Yes, uh, as a matter of fact, in, in uh, hiddenolonger.com, which is my, where all my research is posted online, uh, there's a thing from the uh, Jeffrey Amherst, who is the British colonel in Nova Scotia, who kept a journal about how he did that. In 1749, he ordered the, his uh, troops to distribute smallpox blanks among the Mi'kmaq Indians, and uh, that's on record in his own journal. Uh, we have lots of other of that kind of first-hand evidence. And just uh, 20 yards from where I'm sitting is the Nanaimo, uh, the grounds of the Nanaimo Indian Hospital where this was done to Native children right up to the 1980s. And, you know, you can't get on that ground anymore. It's controlled by the military. They won't let anybody on there. But there are mass graves, you know, very near where I'm sitting. It, it's all over the country. And we released a list of 28 of these mass grave sites. We're going to be going around to these sites with our own grand penetrating radar over the next year or two. And so this is concrete evidence we're going to uh, take out to the world over the next year. Tell us where you're digging now in the last few weeks, and it's now been sent to the labs, what you've discovered. Well, uh, we're at the oldest Indian residential school site in Canada. It's called the Mohawk Institute. It was set up by the Crown of England in 1832. Uh, uh, generations of Mohawk children were there. Over half of them didn't come back, according to their own statistics. And we've been invited by the Ong Wahanwe, or the Mohawk people, uh, to, to come there. We've conducted ground penetrating radar surveys and some initial test digs where uh, bone fragments have been discovered. Also massive soil dislocation on the site of, of graves. So in other words, they, they piled 10 or 15 feet of soil on top of these graves. And also we found a tunnel system under the school where eyewitnesses have said children were, were, were uh, their bodies were taken through those tunnels to the furnace room where they were incinerated. So uh, we're going to be going in there. The important thing to understand is this is under Mohawk jurisdiction. They're not going to let the uh, RCMP or the police onto the site. They've claimed that this is their land and they're going to do their own crime investigation. So um, over the next month or two, we're going to be doing exactly that. Going to be doing the analysis of these remains and, uh, uh, you know, present a report in the new year where we have, we believe, conclusive evidence that the Crown of England and the, the Anglican Church and the, and the Vatican were involved in these crimes right in Brentford, Ontario. Well, we know about all the stuff the Vatican's been caught doing and the cover-ups with the kids, uh, and we know about the Boy Scouts. Turns out there's a list of 5,000 or more known molesters that they won't release. And it seems like these institutions is where all these crazies try to go and take over institutions like towns that get corrupt police so they can get away with having all this power. And uh, it's, it's all I know is your government admits Half the kids died at these places. I mean, I mean, the, the, those numbers, that that magnitude uh, is so incredible. You know, I saw some of the photos we were just showing that you provided to us, uh, and it showed uh, you know clothing, what looks like bones. And again, this has just been dug up in the last week, uh, and it's been sent off to be tested. Uh, but uh, what's going on with what else have you found in these digs? Well, the elders at the, in that community don't want all of it released at this point. There's a lot of an attempt by the government of Canada to shut down this dig, and so the people are trying to uh, keep some of this under wraps for now. But I can tell you, and I've been authorized to tell you, that we have found evidence to confirm what eyewitnesses have been saying, that children were buried on the, uh, in, for generations were buried. And as a matter of fact, we've discovered a letter from a former principal at the school, a man called Zimmerman, who was uh, in 1948 in a letter said, Due to austerity measures, and this is a direct quote, due to austerity measures, we are, we are now burying children two to a grave, unquote. Unbelievable. Now that's, now, that's the principle admitting that they're burying, that their children dying at such a rate that they have to put two of them in a grave at a time now. Unbelievable. That, yeah. So, I mean, right out of the horse's mouth again. Now, we're going back four years ago here. If I'm going from memory and all the articles I read at the time, we showed one of them earlier, but 
I'm correct in, in that they were basically starving them as well. I mean, it was a an entire. I mean, I mean, we're hearing the word austerity. It was about you know depriving them, getting them into the state, and then also taking them from their parents or families. Correct. I mean, this was a CPS type operation. Absolutely. It was the law in Canada that the children had to be taken from their parent. The parents would never see them again, or sometimes not for 15 years or more. That's like with the uh, Cherokee, the program they had to send them to the yeah. east. So this is this forced breakup of the family still going on in Canada. When?